What's going on, Browns fans? Today we got a quick reaction to a new signing for the Cleveland Browns, a big one in, in terms of news. Jadavion Clowney finally signing a one-year deal for $10 million, uh, with the Cleveland Browns making the defensive front for the Browns a scary sight to see. Uh, Jeff, just coming off this news probably less than 10 or 15 minutes ago, what are, you, what are your thoughts? Right. Preliminary thoughts. I am a little bit disappointed with the price tag. I'm going to get that out of the way right away. 10 million is definitely seems like an overpayment, not based on his talent, but just based on his availability, him being injury prone. But it's one year. Andrew Barry, you know, not locking this guy up for, you know, X amount of years. Miles Garrett on the other side of him. Jadavian Clowney, this is probably the best situation he's been in in a minute. He's going to have to produce. And AFC North quarterbacks are, you know, they're terrified. I know they are. Yeah, absolutely. They're going to be in trouble all year long. A couple things from me about Jadavian. I wasn't, I, again, I'm with Jeff on this one. The money is for me, it's way too much. He's only had one full healthy season. And the big key of talking about that is just, you know, we're, we're a playoff team. If he gets hurt in the end of the season, end of regular season, he's unavailable. That signing is no longer a good thing, no matter what happened in the regular season. So, you know, hopefully he gets to stay healthy and we get a healthy Jadavion Clowney with Miles Garrett, Sheldon Richardson, and, you know, the rest of this defense that we've, you know, slowly added to and fixed key positions at. So, um, you know, he has, I think he has the fifth highest double team rate, um, which is, you know, extraordinary behind Miles Garrett, who I think is either number one or number two, um, saw those percentages the other day. So, you know, one of them is going to be getting one-on-ones and the other is going to get double team, which is a great thing for us. Obviously we need more of a pass rush, but again, we'll see how this turns out. 10 million is a lot to bite on the cap space and the cap rollover, but you know, a few other points that this, you know, affects is now the draft. What will we do at 26? What will be that number 26 pick in the draft for us? And the cap rollover for next year in terms of signing guys, I believe there's going to be a cap increase next year. So maybe they signed him for that $10 million this year and, you know, only the one year deal just because, but we'll see, honestly, a lot to take in right now. I'm glad that he finally got the deal done. You know, teams like Baltimore and the Colts, I believe were runner ups in this case for who else he was bidding for or being bid by. So Glad to see that he's not going to the other team in the AFC North that we will be competing against. Yeah, the flexibility is great here. Just a couple of points, you know, real quick. One, we've seen Andrew Berry's MO, defensive line, defensive line, defensive line. I could see, and thinking about it more and more, I could see paying a little bit more for Clowney just because of the flexibility. You know, you pay a little bit more, maybe overpay like we've been saying, but you get the flexibility. Now it's looking like linebacker or cornerback or move out of the first round, maybe even move back, maybe even move forward, who knows. But just the options there, I'm okay with paying Clowney a little bit more just for the options. Um, we have Malik Jackson now and Tack McKinley. We have Tack McKinley who's going to want to be proving himself too. I'm sure Clowney wants to silence haters. Um, it seems like the money was a big thing for him, but I think overall just he's underrated as a run defender too. I think, yeah. I think he's, you know, he's, he's a good package if he could stay on the field, but we've seen Andrew Barry sticking with the plan. That's three defensive linemen now in this free agency when, you know, who would have thought that would have happened you know, three or four weeks ago that we would have three new guys on the defensive line. The whole defense is revamped, recharged, ready to go. Locked down on the lake. I'm so excited. Yeah, I gotten quite a few by Andrew Berry, quite a few starters on this defense. Defensive end, cornerback, safety, linebacker, quite a few holes have been filled up. Now we could head into the draft with this signing. I think Tredavion, he's a great player. Um, no knock on him for being a good player when he's on the field. That's just the one problem. He has only had one healthy season. Um, but when he plays, he's a very good tackler, very good run stopper. And occasionally, you know, with that double team percentage, he doesn't have the best sack numbers, but is still good in pressure. So um, I like the signing. I don't like the money about it, but I do like that we finally got him to, you know, land. And it just didn't happen with the Ravens or the Colts, an AFC yep. team that we'll potentially see in the playoffs and throughout the season. So, yep. Jeff, anything that else before we uh, we call it? You know, just a lot easier for us, you know, drop a sub, give us your reactions and, you know, make sure that you like the video because this makes, you know, our next draft video, draft 2.0, which we're definitely going to get around to before the actual draft happens in Cleveland, Ohio. But this makes it a lot easier for us, it seems like, talking about the 26th pick because, you know, 
a lot of what we were talking about was defensive end, defensive lineman related. So it's pretty much seeming like, you know, there's only a couple names that Andrew Barry could look at at 26 here, which is even more exciting for the sense where he really doesn't have, you know, it seems like we, we as the fans know what he's going to do. And it's actually a good move. It's not like, Oh, we think in prior years where we might do something stupid and then some, we do something dumb happens. Um, but, you know, paying a couple extra million for Clowney at the end of the day, just for the intimidation factor, just for stacking that D line, I'm I'm down for it. The game plan that goes around trying to you know pass yeah, block or can't run double block team, against him. Can't double team him and Miles at the same time. You really just can't. Absolutely, yeah. And just like Jeff said, leave a comment down below. Let us know what you guys think of the signing. What you know, what you think we said about it and everything. So we want to hear your thoughts. We want to interact with you guys. And uh, like you said, like, sub, follow for more content. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.